Thank you for watching Community Roundtable. I'm your host, Henry Huang. Our studio guest today is the director of the SBA Los Angeles District Office. Uh, the office oversees 12 million people in the Los Angeles, Santa Barbara, and Ventura County. The office oversees a yearly financing over $1.02 billion of dollars to 3,700 plus businesses. Its leader, the LA office, is ranked number one in financing the underserved and the women owned business. I would like to welcome Mr. Alberto Alvarado to the show. Henry, how are you? I'm so It's ni nice to be here. Thank you for the invitation. No problem. Well, you oversee uh, such a vast amount of the you know territory and people. But before we're going to talk about your office, uh, most people watching the show, I mean, most people do, but maybe some there don't know what is an SBA. What's a, I think it stands for Small Business Administration. Yes, yes. Well, let me tell you, the, the SBA was founded uh, about uh, 56 uh, years ago. We're a federal agency. We have offices in 68 locations uh, throughout the country, uh, and we basically provide uh, assistance to small businesses. It's long been recognized, Henry, and I think a lot of your uh, listening and, and viewing audience are, are in fact uh, business owners. Mm -hmm. uh, and we now know that the, the bulk of the jobs, the majority of the jobs, for example, in our community are created by small business uh, right. men and women. So long ago, the federal government recognized that giving assistance uh, to those business owners to really uh, support their um, entrepreneurial dream mm -hmm. was very, very important. So that, that is what the SBA yeah. does, specifically functions to assist small business owners. I really see that they had the foresight. I understand, uh, I think the statistics say something about over 90% of the jobs are in fact created by small business. Well, that's uh, absolutely the case, and it's no longer, uh, you're such a young man, uh, I've been around a while, but uh, back when I was your age, mm -hmm. uh, most of the jobs in the American economy, and frankly worldwide, were created by large uh, businesses, and that's no longer the case. That really is reversed now, right. that some, uh, between 75% and 90% of the new jobs are created by small businesses, and within that group, the single strongest component in the small business sector are minority-owned businesses, mm -hmm. businesses owned by immigrants, businesses owned by women, mm -hmm. and that's a remarkable uh, turnaround, and this is why it's so important that not only the government supports small business, but that the private sector supports small business also. Right, and, and I know the term small business is an arbitrary term because what do you mean by small business? Is it because employee less than 50 people or over 100 people? How do you define small yes. business? The, the, uh, the SBA has uh, a size standards, uh, mm -hmm. and those size standards uh, relate to the particular industry that the business uh, is in. It, it's uh, often a shorthand way of looking at it. If you have uh, less than 100 employees, you're probably considered a small business. And there are a lot of statistics that say that well over 95% of all businesses would be considered small. We have certain uh, industries where you could have up to 2,000 employees, mm. certain manufacturers manufacturing uh, industries where even even with that many employees you're still considered uh, small I see so it's industry specific, industry specific yes. so p people maybe a minority owner out there running maybe 200 people business my thinking, oh, I might not be a small business, but that's absolutely not the absolutely, truth. Absolutely, absolutely. And one of the first things that we would do is to, to compare the size standard. We have people calling us mm -hmm. all the time. Do I qualify? We check it, and uh, it is very rare uh, mm -hmm. that we find that the, a business is, uh, is not eligible. Obviously, uh, a Ford Motor Company, something like right. that, is going to be going to be considered large. And I think that was a very important point because when we talk when we talk about small business in our mind immediately pop up it's like mom and pop shop we call that small business but obviously it, it, it's not the absolute truth that you know a sizable organization can also consider. Well, let me give you business. let me give you a quick example uh, in the construction industry, the size standard in construction. Uh, is $38.5 million in average annual receipts. So yeah. that's, that's, to some people, that's very large. Mm -hmm. and, but the, the purpose of having a standard that that's large, to some people, it's not large enough, you see. 
is that you can qualify if you're a, a fellow that's got a, a dog, a shovel, and a truck, and you think you're a construction company, mm -hmm. you would qualify, as well as a pretty mid-size uh, firm would qualify under that. The, the fact of the matter is that, that those firms are ultimately going to be competing with the giant uh, corporations, multinational uh, corporations that have right. billions and billions of dollars in, in annual receipts. So what we're trying to do is create uh, uh, very, very small businesses, give them support, mm -hmm. but also those medium size so they can ultimately compete with some of the, the big boys and girls in their particular industry, so to speak. Right. Well, that's great. And it's great for this clarification. Now, um, I mean, it's great the government created this uh, administration called the Small Business Administration. Uh, I believe a lot of people out there, uh, the small business owners or entrepreneurs that are hearing SBA all the time is through their banks. Mm -hmm. You go, oh, why don't you can get an SBA loan, SBA loan. But I know SBA is just more than that. It's just mm -hmm. not, you, you don't just loan the money out. You, there's also other functions. Can mm -hmm. you share with us what other functions? 